The reality of the Baofeng radio you run on your kit is that it's more likely to put you in harm's way than protect you on the modern battlefield. Imagine you're in a besieged nation that's just become involved in a war. That radio on your chest or phone in your pocket? It's your only link to help. You press the talk button to call for support, but you don't know that your voice just became a homing beacon. In the time it takes you to say enemy spotted, a drone high above you has your exact location, and an artillery shell is already on its way. This is the terrifying reality of modern warfare. The life-saving device you rely on has become a liability. It's an invisible bullseye that can draw kinetic fire from miles away. On today's battlefield, the electromagnetic spectrum is as dangerous as any minefield. Today, we'll break down the terrifying reality of modern electronic warfare. We'll explore how your radio can get you killed and what soldiers and tacticians are doing to survive on the battlefield, where one of the deadliest threats is the one you can't see. To understand this threat, you have to understand a fundamental truth of modern conflict. The electromagnetic spectrum is a double-edged sword. Every device that transmits anything, from a multi-million dollar command post to a simple handheld Baofeng radio, is screaming its position into the air. One of the most critical and brutal lessons from the war in Ukraine is that military units can be found, tracked, and targeted with devastating precision based only on the signals they emit. For decades, the radio was a symbol of connection and support. It was a lifeline. But the very physics that allow it to work are now being turned against its users. Russian electronic warfare, or REW units, have refined this into a deadly art form. They aren't just listening to conversations, they're hunting the signals themselves. Think of it like this. On a dark night, a single flashlight beam or campfire can be seen for miles. On the electromagnetic spectrum, your radio transmission is that flashlight beam, and the enemy can see it. They don't need to see you, they just need to see your signal. This has turned the simple act of communication via radio into a high-stakes gamble where pressing the talk button can trigger an immediate and lethal response. This detection-to-destruction process has become so brutally efficient that it has forced a complete reevaluation of how soldiers communicate today. So how does detecting your radio signal actually work? How does a radio squawk turn into a precise grid coordinate for an artillery strike? It begins with passive detection. The most sophisticated electronic warfare systems hardly transmit anything at all, making them nearly impossible to find. All they do is listen. Imagine an array of incredibly sensitive microphones spread out over miles, all listening for a single sound. This is what systems like the Russian R330ZH Zetel do, but instead of sound, they're listening for your radio frequencies. Once your signal is detected, the hunt is on. The technique is called radio direction finding, or RDF. In its simplest form, it works through triangulation. If one listening post gets a bearing on your signal from the east, and another gets a bearing from the south, the point where those two lines intersect is your approximate location. Modern military systems use multiple listening posts and sophisticated algorithms to do this almost instantaneously, plotting your position on a digital map with terrifying accuracy. But it gets even more granular. These systems don't just know where you are, they can figure out who you are. By analyzing the unique characteristics of your transmission, like its frequency, its power, the specific way it modulates, they can identify the type of radio you're using, and that means they can distinguish a command and control network from a squad-level radio, or even a commercial walkie-talkie which is being used by Ukrainian forces out of necessity. This allows an enemy commander to build a complete electronic order of battle. They can see how your forces are arranged, identify high-value targets like command posts, and then decide which signals to jam and which to target. All of this happens in the invisible realm of the electromagnetic spectrum, long before a single shot is fired. The war in Ukraine has been a brutal, real-world laboratory for these concepts. From the earliest days of the conflict, both sides have aggressively used electronic warfare, but Russia in particular has integrated it into a lethal sensor-to-shooter loop. Their doctrine combines electronic warfare with drones and artillery in a devastatingly effective triad. Here's how a typical scenario plays out. An Orlin-10 drone flies over Ukrainian lines. 
It isn't just equipped with a camera, it's also packed with signal intelligence gear designed to detect radio and even cell phone transmissions. When a Ukrainian unit radios its position or calls for support, the drone instantly picks up that signal. That data is relayed to a ground station, where an EW unit like the Lear 3 system analyzes it. Within minutes, the coordinates of that radio are passed to an artillery battery. A shell is fired. The entire process, from a soldier pressing a button to a high explosive round arriving, can be as short as three to five minutes. This is not a theoretical capability. It is a daily reality on the front lines in Ukraine. It has forced Ukrainian units to become paranoid about any form of electronic emissions. Reports from the field describe soldiers being told to turn off their phones and use their radios as little as humanly possible. The threat is so acute that even simple text messages have been used to geolocate and target personnel. This constant invisible pressure has fundamentally changed battlefield behavior, making every transmission a calculated risk. So if transmitting is a death sentence, how do you fight and coordinate? The answer has been a forced regression in tactics and discipline. As the U.S. Army is shifting its training focus from counterinsurgency to large-scale combat operations to prepare for potential conflicts with near-peer adversaries like Russia and China, armies are now re-examining the old model of having a single, dedicated radio man in a squad. By concentrating transmissions through one operator, a unit drastically reduces its electronic signature, presenting fewer targets for an enemy to find. It's a trade-off. You sacrifice some connectivity for a massive gain in survivability. The next critical adjustment is enforcing strict emissions control, or MCON. This is a military principle that treats all electronic transmissions as a potential vulnerability, forcing you to operate under the assumption that the enemy is always listening. This means practicing extreme radio discipline. Instead of long, chatty conversations, communications become short, data-rich burst transmissions. These are compressed packets of information sent in a fraction of a second. The idea is to transmit so quickly that enemy direction finding systems don't have enough time to get an accurate lock on your signal. It's a cat and mouse game played at the speed of light. If radios must be used, units will pre-plan communication windows, specific short periods when they are allowed to transmit. Outside of those windows, it's total radio silence, and in many cases, units have reverted to older, non-electronic methods, meaning they're sending physical runners or using visual signals like flags or lights. This may seem archaic, but these old methods leave no electromagnetic trace. Now, this invisible war is not just confined to the military. As electronic warfare technology becomes cheaper and more widespread, the implications for civilians in any unstable environment are profound. The same detection, jamming, and targeting triad that threatens soldiers poses a grave risk to anyone relying on standard off-the-shelf radios during a crisis. First, they'll hear you. Second, once detected, your communication can be easily jammed, rendering it useless. And third, most critically, the location of your transmission can be used for targeting. In a conflict zone, a civilian first responder or a neighborhood watch group using unencrypted radios could inadvertently draw fire to their location. This means that for preppers, community organizers, or journalists operating in contested areas, the old rules of communication in active conflict zones no longer apply. The most secure methods are those that leave no electromagnetic signature. This means prioritizing physical couriers for sensitive messages, using prearranged visual signals like smoke or colored panels, or even acoustic signals like whistles. If radios are an absolute necessity, they must be used with extreme discipline. Keep transmissions incredibly short and never transmit from the same location twice if you can help it, and operate with constant awareness that your voice is a beacon. The modern battlefield has become a transparent environment. The contest between seeing and being seen has moved from the physical world into the electromagnetic spectrum. Every single radio transmission Every cell phone signal and every Wi-Fi network paints a target on a map. The brutal lesson from Ukraine and other conflicts have shown that the mastery of this invisible domain is not just an advantage, it is a prerequisite for survival. If you found this breakdown helpful, be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.